Hello and welcome to the third FMSP core prerequisites video. These videos are designed to help you get ahead with independent study of the A2 core, ready to develop the skills in A2 further pure modules. This shows what you need to know already before working through this video. If you're not sure about any of this, work through the relevant videos first. It's a good idea to have all of this to hand while watching the video, so pause it now and go and get everything together. Make sure you've set aside sufficient time to tackle the questions as well as watch the video. First we're going to find out about two new related functions. Then we're going to look at how to differentiate these as well as differentiating trig functions. We're going to start with the function 2 to the x. We're going to differentiate it from first principles using a numerical method. We're going to find the gradient at x equals 0 and we're going to do that by taking a chord uh, which starts at 0 and gradually decrease the length of that chord until we get an approximation for the tangent. So looking at my gradient triangle you'll see that the base is h and the height well, the top of that line is 2 to the h, and the bottom of it is 2 to the 0. 2 to the 0 is 1, of course, so that means that the gradient of that chord is 2 to the h, take away 1, divided by h. Now we're going to try different values of h. Let's start with 0 0.1. So we'll plug 0 0.1 into the formula for the gradient. 2 to the 0 0.1, take away 1, divide that answer by 0.1 and we get an answer of 0.7177. Then repeat with h being 0.01. Plug that in, we get 2 to the 0.01 take away 1 and divide that by 0.01 and we get 0.6956. And repeat it with gradually decreasing values of h, so we put h equals 0 0.001 and get 0 0.6934 and then h is 0 0.0001 and we get 0 0.6932. You can pause the video now and try it with in gradually um, decreasing values of h either on a calculator or on a spreadsheet uh, but you should find that it tends to a limit around about 0 0.69. It doesn't tend to 0 0.69 exactly, but it does tend to a limit round about there. OK, let's try 3 to the x. All the thinking is the same, just some different numbers. So looking at my gradient triangle again, the base is h, and this time the height is 3 to the h minus 3 to the 0. 3 to the 0 is 1, so my gradient is 3 to the h take away 1 over h. And again I'm going to try this for ever decreasing values of h to see what the limit is, which will be the gradient of the tangent. So if I put 0 0.1 in there, I get 3 to the 0 0.1 take away 1, divide that by 0 0.1 and I get 1.1612. Then try with h is 0 0.01 and I get 1.1047 and 0 0.001 will give me 1.092 and then h equals 0 0.0001 gives me 1.0987. And if you continue this process either with a calculator or a spreadsheet, then you'll find it tends to a limit around 1.1. So, if we differentiate 2 to the x at 0, we get 0 0.69, and if we differentiate 3 to the x, we get 1.1. There should be a value between 2 and 3, closer to 3, where the gradient at 0 is 1. And it can be shown, but you'll need to do maths at university in order to do this, that the required value is E, 2.7182818. E is a number rather like P, 
pi is not the solution of any nice equation. So not only is it irrational, but it's also what's called transcendental. And E is defined to be the special number for which this is true, that when you differentiate it um, at um, 0, you get 1. In the same way, really, that pi is defined to be the ratio circumference over diameter of a circle. The challenge is working out the values of pi and E as decimal numbers. So if you find E on your calculator, and it's worth uh, pausing the video and making sure that you found this, and then try that um, formula, e to the power 0 0.1, take away 1, divided by 0 0.1. And you should get the answer 1.0517. If you don't get it straight away, pause the video and have another go and make sure you've got that. Then try it with h equals 0 0.01 and you should get 1.0050. And then for h is 0 0.001, 1.0005 and so on. And if you continue for a long way, you'll see that this does seem to be tending towards a limit of 1. OK, we've done that numerically rather than algebraically. Um, but we can now find the gradient with only a little bit of hand waving because this is A-level maths and not degree level maths um, to find the gradient of e to the x at the point x equals p. So the gradient is the limit as h gets very, very small. So in other words, as this length here, p to p plus h, uh, decreases of this length here, which is e to the p plus h, take away e to the p, divided by h. So we can do a little bit of rearranging. We can take out a factor of e to the p at the top. And as that p does e to the p doesn't involve h at all, we can in fact take it right outside. And we've already shown, numerically, that's the little bit of hand-waving. Um, or alternatively, by thinking about the definition of e to the h, that this limit is equal to 1. And therefore, the gradient at p is e to the p. So here we are. If y equals e to the x, then dy by dx is e to the x. And e is the special number for which this is true. We define e to be this special number, um, so there's no hand-waving there. Um, the issue is actually working out what e is, and that is um, way beyond A-level maths. OK, a little bit of a recap about um, what differentiation is, where it comes from. Um, dy by dx is the limit as um, dx tends towards 0 of delta y divided by delta x. Remember that delta x here is a little bit of x. It's a single um, term. Um, that means that dx by dy is going to be the limit as delta y tends towards 0 of delta x divided by delta y. And that means that as long as everything behaves nicely, dy by dx is equal to 1 divided by dx by dy. There's going to be quite a bit of this annoying hand waving. At the moment, you can only deal with some limits numerically, and it's a whole university lecture course to do it properly. But it's worth having a look and getting some idea of where these results come from, rather than just bringing them out of thin air. So, ln of x. We say that that's the natural log of x, and it's uh, basically um, log to base e. Okay, 
So if y is equal to the log to base e of x, that's the same as saying e to the y is equal to x. This is just normal logarithms, but with a new base. And instead of writing log to base e, we write ln or natural log. Um, this base is so important, it's got its own special shorthand. Now then, we know by definition that dx by dy is equal to e to the y. And therefore, from the previous slide, dy by dx is 1 over e to the y, which is 1 over x, because we said at the top that e to the y was equal to x. So here we go. This is what we found about e to the x and natural log. If y is equal to e to the x, then dy by dx is e to the x. It doesn't change. If y is the natural log of x, that's the same as saying e to the y is equal to x. And if we differentiate natural log, we get 1 over x. That means that by the fundamental theorem of calculus, which tells you that integration is the reverse of differentiation, the integral of 1 over x is the natural log of x plus constant. So now you can integrate that annoying x to the minus 1, which was the one power of x that you couldn't integrate before. OK, that's enough about e and natural log. Let's have a look at um, trig functions. So, um, let's have a quick sketch of a sine curve. What would the gradient function of this look like? Well, let's look at some key points. At uh, this point here, the gradient is zero. At the origin, the gradient is at its steepest. Um, don't forget that um, we've got a, a scale here that's um, 90 degrees, 180 degrees. So although that looks quite steep, you're dividing by um, a, a very high number on the x-axis. Uh, at 180 degrees, uh, the gradient is the same as at zero, but negative. And at 270, the gradient is going to be zero again. So what we get is something that looks a bit like a sort of squashed um, cosine curve. OK, let's have a look at this a little bit more accurately with some graph sketching software. Here's a much better um, sine curve. Let's plot the gradient curve slowly. You can see that tangent, the blue tangent line moving around. It's reached um, to minus 270 gradient of zero. Decreasing. And then increasing back up to zero. Increasing up to that maximum value. Decreasing back to zero. Decreasing a bit further back up to zero, and then back up to the maximum value. Now, what would be um, nice is if we could actually make that equal to cos x rather than um, some very, very tiny multiple of cos x. So um, we're going to try and change the x-axis scale to make it steeper. So we'll start by changing the axes. Instead of going from minus 360 to 360, we'll change it from minus 10 to 10. And then we're going to change the function to y equals 100x. OK, so the red function is sine of 100x, and the blue function is the gradient function. And we can see that we've squashed it in too far, and the gradient function is now um, a multiple of cos x that's bigger than 1. So let's try something a little bit smaller. We try 50. Now that looks better. It's a little bit too small now, but we're quite close. 
So we're going to do this by trial and improvement. Let's try 55. Nearly there. And because I know what this is supposed to be, 57 is about the right number. Now, have a look at the period of our original sine function now. So we can see that the um, period is completed at that point there, which is a little bit bigger than 6. And halfway through the period is a little bit bigger than 3. And your suspicious mind should make you start thinking about pi and 2 pi. So we seem to have a period now of 2 pi. And that should ring bells. 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So if we were to measure our angles in radians instead of in degrees, this should work. So let's go back to make that sine of x and change our angle to radians and hey presto. If we measure our angles in radians, then we find that when we differentiate sine x, we get cos x. Now, have a think. What would be the gradient if we changed it from sine x to cos x? Pause the video and think for a minute first. What would the gradient of cos x be? It's not sine x. So if you thought it was, pause the video again and have another think. Let's have a look at it. The red curve is cos x and the blue curve, it isn't sin x, it's minus sin x. And you can see how that works uh, by the fact that we've got a negative gradient when um, x is pi over 2. OK, now I haven't proved those. We've... Um, looked at it again, sort of numerically made a guess and seen how it works. If you want to look at these results, if, if proving this is important to you, then you need to be doing maths at university rather than um, engineering. If you just want to get on and use these things, then perhaps engineering is going to be the right course for you. So, these results are true. If you differentiate sine x, you get cos x. If you differentiate cos x, you get minus sine x. But they are only true if you are working in radians. If you tried to work in degrees, you'd get an irritating multiple every time you differentiated. And um, some of the work you're going to be doing in Further Pure 2 requires lots of repeated differentiation and it's all going to get terribly messy. So although working in radians is itself somewhat messy, it does make everything else much, much easier. OK, don't panic if you found this hard. All you actually need to know are the definitions and results. But do run through bits of the video again if you want to know where it comes from. Now, as usual, it's a good idea to do some consolidation work before moving on. But in this case, there probably isn't very much in your textbooks that you can do just on the basis of what we've done in this video. And you may well want to move straight on to the next video first and then um, do the consolidation after that. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. The next one, uh, which develops fluency with a chain rule and reinforces uh, the differentiation learnt here, will enable you to continue with some work from your textbooks afterwards. I look forward to your company in that video. Goodbye.